There are many different types of house plants. They come from a variety of different environments and different parts of the world and they therefore need different rooting mediums when you grow them in pots in the house. Um, so today I'm going to talk about four different types of rooting medium that you will need for different types of house plants. Um, the first one of these is house plant compost. So here are two different types of house plant compost. This type of compost is geared towards jungle plants like uh, peace lilies, um, but don't uh, do them when they're flowering. Uh, peace lilies um, like to be watered from underneath, but not until they've drooped a bit. Um, and then they like to be given quite a generous amount of water, and when they suck up the water they all ping back up again. So here's one that isn't flowering. Um, it's really pot bound and there's loads and loads of peace lilies in here um, so I'm going to gently get out of its pot just tappy tap tap not as hard as I would with this shrub just more gentle tap really uh, and there's one way of telling when plants are pot bound because they sort of grow out of the holes here and um, there we are um, uh, now, so what I'm going to do now is gently break this apart into kind of different lumps of peace lily. As you can see here, there's like a good clump here and there's another big clump there. So I'll just sort of, you can do this with a trowel or a knife or something, but um, it doesn't really keep the roots stay well intact. It's best to just do it with your two thumbs like that, hold them like this, the other ones, and and just gently, really just gently at it, um, just gently trying to tease them apart and try and keep as much soil as you can, uh, like so. And then just gonna gently wiggle between the roots. Uh, so there's one nice lump. And, uh, and another nice lump there. And, oh, one, two, three. So we've got quite a few there. So now go over each of these ones and just tidy them up a bit and pick off these dead leaves. So take one piece of piece of lily at a time. Um, you can see here that I could have divided it further, um, but I'm going to keep it like that, a nice healthy clump. Um, size up a nice pot for it that's not too big or too small. Um, get a nice handful of this uh, house plant compost and put it in the bottom. A little bit too much. And then Put it in there so the, they, you want this sort of the, the same height as it was in the last pot. So you see the light colour bit that was under the ground. Let's get those leaves out of the way. So the ground wants to come up to about there. So that's a bit of, bit of uh, this at a time. And put it in around the edge and just, just uh, gently press it down uh, like that. Um, until it's just um, half an inch or a centimetre from the top of the pot, like so. This one here, I've put two smaller clumps in this one pot and let's get some soil and uh, just, just uh, move it around, you know, and that side a bit more and just, just go down like so with your fingers. Um, uh -huh. And a bit in the middle. It goes down quite a bit when you press it down. And you can just alter them if they're not in the right place, you can just alter them a bit. Uh, and a little bit more. Uh, I think that should do. Whenever I put 
peace lilies in any other type of compost, they haven't survived. There, I got four out of that. And now I need to find a saucer for each of these to go on. Um, it's always good to have a saucer for houseplants rather than one of these awful container things because with these big containers that cover the whole pot, you can't tell if there's water sitting in there or not. Um, it's much easier to have a saucer like this that you can see if there's water there or not. So that one for that one, and maybe this one for that one. Peace lilies normally like to be watered from underneath, but uh, when I've repotted them, I always do it from the top so that the soil gets nicely um, compacted down. Um, but I always water them sometimes from the top because otherwise salts can rise up and collect on the top. Uh, but for now I'm going to give them a really good soaking and let them sit in water for about two hours. So water from the top and the bottom. And I'll be able to reuse this rest of the water from, uh, from my other house plants. These saucers are a bit big and I'm just using these bigger saucers whilst I'm soaking them. Um, I suppose that sort of size ratio for saucer to plant's about right, I reckon. Because although peace lilies don't like to be watered until they're really dry and drooping, when they do get watered they like a big drink, so it's nice to have a big saucer that can take a lot of water when they're really thirsty. Another plant that I've put in the jungle plant category is the same plant here. Um, quite pot band. They don't really like to be in too much of a pot size change. They like to just go up enough to be able to comfortably plant it, but um, not too much bigger. So before I get it out of this pot, I need to find a pot. Um, hmm. um, that one's a bit bigger, but not big enough. Um, and that one's too big. This one should do. Here I'm not dividing the plant up, so I'm putting it straight into the pot so I don't need to touch the root ball at all. Um, put that to take a bit out. Um, so it's um, just uh, so that the, the soil height is just a bit lower than the top of the pot. And then just gently uh, push soil in all around, just like we did with the peace lily. Praying plants are pernickety things. They don't like um, being overwatered because that can make them rot. They don't like being uh, forgotten about not watered because then they're just all dry and uh, they have to grow again from the base then. And they don't like direct sunlight, so you've got to keep them somewhere out of direct sunlight. They're really fuzzy, but they're very rewarding if you can grow them and they will grow further away from light than most house plants. So just like with the peace lily, I'm watering it from the top and the bottom to make sure that all this, all the compost is uh, um, compacted down. Uh, and I'm just gonna stand it like that for two hours and then I'm gonna put it in like a, a, a little saucer for it, back in its original home. Number two, woody perennials. These plants, like uh, shrubs and trees, woody perennials, uh, they're like John Innes number three or John Innes number two. Uh, the difference between them really is that the John Innes 2 is more sandy. It's sort of um, often used for like potting on seedlings before you put them into the the bigger compost. Um, but um, number 2 does better for more deserty indoor shrubby perennials and the number 3 does better for the more jungly ones. Like this begonia, for example. This one would love John in this number two, um, but I'm not going to repot this one today because it's flowering. This begonia isn't flowering, but um, it doesn't need repotting yet. The pot's fine. We need to get a bit bigger before I repot this one. Um, however, this one needs repotting. And um, <laughs> and this one definitely needs repotting, and so do all these. So, um, I'm always sticking things in water. Uh, there's a little uh, begonia cutting with roots that really badly needs to go in and be repotted.
So I'll get the John in his number two. This little cutting would be good in this pot because um, it's uh, about this was a cutting when I put it in the pot, so that one could be upgraded. Um, and look at this. Uh, this is actually just a leaf that's grown roots. The gonias can actually do this, but actually you can grow little plants from just one leaf. You can grow many plants from one leaf, but that's a bit complicated for me. But that's just from a leaf, so I'm quite impressed with that. Um, so I'm going to first thing get this one out of its pot. Again, just gently tap it and um, eventually it will come out and there we are. So I'll put a bit of soil in the bottom here and get my little plant here and uh, put some compost all around it in number two and my little leaf I can put in here as well and uh, so and just gent very gently just with a finger just uh, pull it down a bit and, and it up like so and then uh, and I'll do the same, give it a nice soaking for now. And this one can now be upgraded to a slightly bigger pot. So uh, woody perennials like these ones will need John in this number three, but none of them need repotting at the moment. Number three, cacti and succulents. So I'm not exactly sure what this was, um, some sort of um, a bottle experiment, but it needed a lid I think so it's all grown out and it's uh, there are two succulents here I think I'll see if I can try and get them out I'm trying to cut these two apart with this knife one and there's the other one. Cacti and succulents like to go in cacti compost. Um, cacti and succulents like to go in clay pots because they breathe better um, and they don't like to go too big the next size up. In fact if you just go like the kind of the next size up pots uh, they really don't like going in bigger pots. Um, so that one's going to do for the jade tree or money plant and I'm going to put a little stone in the bottom, just to go over that little hole there, it gives it better drainage. And then I'm going to put some soil in the bottom and a little um, jade tree here. Oh, there's something else there. You can take that off as well. And and then get some more. And this. Poor thing hasn't been watered for ages. I don't think it is. Is it? Is it I'm not exactly sure what it is. It's something a bit like a jade tree, some kind of succulent. Um, firm it in nicely, and the poor thing needs a really good water. Uh, there's one of them. So, like with the other plants, I'm going to give them a nice soaking now and then I'll give them a saucer and put them on a sunny windowsill. Number four, epiphytes, plants that grow on the bark of trees. This is a bromeliad, and this is an orchid, Miltonia sunset. Again, I don't really like to replant anything when it's flowering, so I'm gonna get a different one. Orchids need this orchid bark. So here we are, orchid bark. Um, the stuff that's normally sold is really powdery and I don't find that works very well. Um, so I like to use this bigger bark. Right, the first thing I need to do is get all this old bark off. So just um, don't need to get out. Uh, oh, got a label. Um, Something maculata. I wonder if the other half of the label's in there as well. Uh, so, um, yeah, get all these bits of old dead leaf off. All these, it might look a little bit brutal, but um, you want to get all the mouldy old bark off because it naturally spreads to a nice newer bark. And he doesn't want the old manky bits there. Um, and then any kind of dead leaves or 
um, dead roots. In fact, you can, this end bit is kind of usually not with us anymore, so you can take any roots off that are like right down the bottom that aren't really going to help it. Um, and so you've got something like this. Orchids like lots of ventilation, and these orchid pots have uh, all sorts of ventilation holes. Um, I don't personally like these clear ones at all, so that can go there. And these ones are very good. You see, they've got the maximum um, aeration here for the roots. Uh, but if you haven't got a pot like that, you can just make some holes in an ordinary pot, just make loads of holes with scissors or something. So uh, I'm going to use this one here. Some of the bark and put it in the bottom of the pot. And then get your orchids. Um, but, um, orchids do not like really going in big pots, so you don't really need much bark in the bottom to start with. And um, put them in there like so, and then put the bark in, just like as if it was soil really. Um, and then just stuff it in with your fingers gently, just like you do with soil. Uh, and I put it like a half a label with it. I think it's a kind of spider orchid. I'll be able to tell when it flowers. Um, now this one, I'm just going to put the shower on warm and just run it under the shower for a bit, and maybe five minutes, and then I'll return it to its windowsill. I never use any sauces for orchids. I spray them every day um, and feed them once a month the food and once a month the flower. So I hope you liked today's video. If you did, please like and subscribe. And if you press the little me, you can see all my other videos. And I shall see you next time.